my name is Don and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a comparison video on all three of my Precision 1022 builds. We're going to go over the accessories, the stocks, the fit and finish, and we're going to talk about the price also. So stay tuned. Okay, so this is the Schillen Barrel 1022 and it's my favorite. It has the 20 inch stainless steel barrel, Brownells bolt and receiver combination. It has the KID two-stage trigger. It's sitting in an Oryx stock. And it has the MDT. This is the larger grip. It's adjustable forward and back. And you can even cant it a little bit, I believe. This grip totally changed the ergonomics of this chassis. Uh, I wasn't real crazy about the chassis at first. There's a lot of uh, shortcomings. Uh, the only M-lock on this is on the bottom, and then once you put your Arca rail on it, it's all covered up, so it has no usable M-lock on it anywhere. The uh, length of pull is a little long, and it's not adjustable. You can add to it, which I don't know why you would. It's, it's quite long as it is. Um, but once I put this grip on it, totally changed the way I felt about this chassis, and I love it now. Uh, the things that I do like about it the most is how solid the, uh, the action is held in this chassis. There is a secondary, you have your regular action bolt on the bottom, and then you have a secondary bolt here that squeezes the back of the receiver. And it does so in such a way that, I mean, this action, I, it, it's very rigid, very strong, uh, just a very good quality rifle. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, so anyways, let's go to the next one. Okay, so this is my KID 1022 rifle, 20 inch stainless steel fluted barrel, KID receiver and bolt. This has the rear tang uh, made for the uh, KRG Bravo stock. It has the single stage KID trigger, which I absolutely love. It's my favorite 1022 trigger I've ever tried. Um, we're running an Arkin SH4 on top with the uh, Arkin 20 MOA rail. This has the KRG Bravo stock. We have the finger adjustable length of pull and cheek rest. We have uh, Area 419 rail on this, this uh, rifle. I don't quite know how to describe my feelings on this rifle. And I have absolutely found when building 1022s, you cannot buy accuracy. There are some parts out there that do not cost a lot of money that uh, are just as accurate as the high dollar stuff. Um, but just the fit and finish on this rifle is it's second to none. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, action and barrel. And inside the barrel when I scoped it, perfect. Beautiful condition. I didn't find a thing wrong with it. The attention to detail on this uh, this rifle is the quality and craftsmanship is is amazing. Uh, I do wish it was a little bit more accurate. Um, I, I figured with you know paying the higher dollar that you would get you know tighter groups than than something that that was less than half the cost. Uh, not the case, but it is a beautiful rifle and I do I do enjoy it. So let's go to the next one. Okay, so this is the budget 1022. This has a 20 inch green mountain barrel on it, Brownells uh, receiver and bolt, ARC NSH4 and the 20 MOA mount, and we're running it in the uh, Victor Titan stock. I do have this built up quite a ways for the height of my scope. Uh, we're running the BX trigger in this with the extended magazine release. We have an Amazon rail on this, and I tell you, this gun is very, very accurate. Uh, I don't see, it, we're going to find out just how well this gun does in, in the shooting here shortly, um, but it is very accurate. I'm curious to see how well it's going to do, because I bet you, uh, I'll bet you it's going to be just as accurate, if not more accurate, than the other two that are a lot more uh, expensive rifles. So I do I do like the gun for the money, you just can't beat it. So, all right, so we're gonna be using long range match today uh, in our shooting of all three rifles. And it seems to be 
the ammunition that shoots about the best out of all three of them. Uh, they, I do have a couple of the rifles lot tested, but I don't think it would be fair to use. I do not have this lot tested. It's not really my, my rifle to lot test. So I just chose an ammunition that's going to shoot well in all three of them. So let's see how they do. We're going to get right to the shooting right now. Number three. Boy, I'm starting to think that the uh, long range match is not a good selection. It is rather cold out, but boy, does not. This kid does not seem to like it much. Okay, this is the Schillen 1022, and same thing, five five shot groups. Okay, number three, and I think I threw one out on that one. Dang it. All right, that's it for the shilling. Okay, budget 1022. All right, so I'm not quite sure if the shoot and see was the exact right target for this. It seems like in the cold, they really like to splat and they splat big, so it's kind of hard to see where the, uh, the round hit. But uh, let me get these measured up and we'll get right back with you. Yeah, so we won't be using these splat targets anymore. They were so hard to read, I had to flip them over and uh, measure them from behind. You know, all three of these rifles shot about the same. Uh, the kid shot a .382, the budget 1022 shot a 382, and the Schillen shot a .388. I mean, you couldn't get much closer in the uh, the group sizes. Um, and the price difference, man, the swing and the price difference on these um, couldn't be more different. Um, the Schillen usually shoots a little bit better than the other two, um, but with this ammo on this day, with the uh, weather being what it was, uh, it actually ended up shooting the worst, but I mean, how can you call that worse? I mean, they all shot really well. Okay, so as you can see, all three rifles shot about the same, uh, and the pricing couldn't be more di different. We've got uh, least expensive, middle of the road expensive, and then really damn expensive. Um, and as far as, you know, I guess it really depends on if you're looking for name recognition, fit and finish, uh, and, and really the fit and finish on this rifle is, there's nothing wrong with the fit and finish on this rifle. 
Uh, it just doesn't have the name. We're not running a stainless steel barrel, so you got to take a little bit better care of this barrel as far as the outside goes uh, and, and the inside. Um, it does have a little bit more upkeep. So as far as accuracy is concerned, spending more money didn't get me more accuracy. It really didn't. Uh, the only thing it did get me is a little bit better stock, a little bit better fit and finish on the, the parts that I installed. But as far as accuracy goes, this shot just as good as the other two. Uh, if you want a good accurate rifle, you don't have to spend the high dollar to get it. Well, that's about all I got for you today, so I hope that you enjoyed this video and enjoyed seeing uh, you know, the gamut of inexpensive to very expensive. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It helps out the channel a lot, doesn't cost you anything, and it, it really shows us how much you appreciate you know, what, we, what we're doing here. So if you uh, like what you saw, please give it a big thumbs up, and thanks for watching.